daily video Bible reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 8 from the New Testament. After he came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him, and a leper approached and bowed low before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you do not speak to anyone, but go, show yourself to a priest, and bring the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible anguish. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Instead, just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and said to those who followed him, I tell you the truth, I have not found such faith in anyone in Israel. I tell you, many will come from the east and west to share the banquet with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, just as you believed it will be done for you. And the servant was healed at that hour. Now when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying down, sick with fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. Then she got up and began to serve them. When it was evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to him. He drove out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. In this way, what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet was fulfilled. He took our weaknesses and carried our disease. Now when Jesus saw a large crowd around him, he gave orders to go to the other side of the lake. Then an expert in the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have dens and the birds in the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. And he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And a great storm developed on the sea, so that the waves began to swamp the boat. But he was asleep. So they came and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are about to die. But he said to them, why are you cowardly, you people of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it was dead calm. And the men were amazed and said, What sort of person is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him. When he came to the other side, to the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were extremely violent so that no one was able to pass by that way. They cried out, Son of God, leave us alone. Have you come here to torment us before the time? A large herd of pigs was feeding some distance from them. Then the demons begged him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. And he said, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep slope into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen ran off, went into the town, and told everyone that that had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the entire town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. God, I think sometimes when, when we read chapters like this, it sometimes can be a little bit confusing because we don't live in the time that these people did and some of their actions or some of their choices even in hindsight may seem a little bit confusing um, like the people who had a chance to see you and talk to you and yet all they were concerned about was the fact that you had just destroyed 
uh, their food supply, <laughs> uh, not understanding that you could supply every need that they ever had, or the fact of a Gentile, the centurion, who seemed to understand the law better than some of the Jewish people in that town and other towns, who, who understood that you as a Jewish person couldn't come into his house, uh, that it would make you unclean, and, and that he, above anybody else, understood that you were the Son of God, that you had powers beyond anything that we could ever imagine. And uh, God, I just ask you today that, that we not get caught up in, in all of the details of, of what fits where and does this make sense here if, if we go and study the history of it and understand the writings at that time and understand all of the connotations around it, um, everything starts to make sense. But God, I just ask that as we go through our day today that we don't focus on all the things that don't seem to make sense. That instead we focus on your amazing power that you will have everything make sense. You understand the totality of everything that is happening in this world and that our responsibility is to have faith, to have faith, lay all of our concerns down at your feet, believe that you will take care of us, whether it's an illness, whether it's a food supply, um, or whether it's just our heart uh, and the faith that we need to have in our heart. God, we just need to go through today and knowing that you will take care of all of those things that you are God, that you are mighty and you are powerful and you are gentle and you are loving and you are kind and you are forgiving and you are so full of grace when, when we so don't deserve that kind of grace. I'm always amazed by that. Today I was uh, reading a tweet on Twitter from uh, John Piper and he said, have we not more often been brought to tears of repentance by undeserved kindness than by severe rebuke. And God, I just thank you today for that gentleness. And I thank you for that grace. And I thank you for your patience with me. As I learn what this world with you looks like, it seems like a new every single morning. And I'm so thankful that you take my hand and walk this path with me. Allow us to be aware of this grace today, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.